Hi, today I want to talk a little bit about protecting your faith. Your faith needs protection. No, no, your faith does not need protection. Your faith is built on the fact, on the truth of the Word of God. Ephesians 2.20 says that the foundation of our faith, of the Christian faith, those believing in Christ for their salvation and eternal life, the foundation is based on the apostles, New Testament, the prophets, Old Testament, and Jesus Christ, the gospel, and the entire Bible from Genesis through Revelation. That's the foundation that our faith is based on. We don't need to protect that faith. Protecting faith is for people that have a blind faith. It's for religions that require people to blindly follow. It's for politicians who require you to blindly believe what they say. It's for anybody that is not searching the truth, have blind faith. God does not ask for us to have blind faith. The, the apostle Peter in his book in 2 Peter chapter 3, he declares also that the Apostle Paul has written the scriptures. He literally says that what the Apostle Paul wrote in all of his epistles were God's word. He proclaims that. And he says, when I'm writing, I'm writing as an eyewitness. I am declaring to you as somebody that has seen Jesus Christ with my own eyes. I'm declaring to you that he is the Messiah that he is God come in the flesh, and that he is the Savior of the world. That is my eyewitness testimony. John says the exact same thing. John says, I've written you, and he wrote five books of the New Testament. He says, I've written you these things so that you may know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life. He said, I am John the Beloved. I was one of the closest disciples to Jesus. I witnessed his glory. I witnessed his divinity. And I declare that he is not only God come in the flesh, but he is God, the creator of the universe in John 1.1. 1, 1. And so that is the testimony. That is what our faith is based on. And we do not need to protect our faith. The Christi Christianity is the most controversial, the most attacked, the most uh, derided, uh, the most discussed, the most studied, the most everything religion in the world. And you know what we usually say as Christians, you know, if we have a proper understanding that we don't have to protect our faith because we're in search of the truth. We usually just say, you know, bring it on. Let's reason together. Uh, we're about finding truth, not about protecting a religion. Try that with any other religion. If you disagree with their foundations, if you disagree with everything in their writings, if you disagree with anything in their, in their churches, in their congregations, in their gatherings, uh, in their belief system, they want you silenced. They want you dead. They want you out. They want to protect their faith. We do not protect our faith. We search for the truth. We're not afraid of the truth. Jesus Christ himself is the truth. And so that's why we have a different attitude. That's probably why we have so many different denominations of the Christian faith is because we're not afraid to be continually trying to understand and seek the truth. And I think God wrote his word in such a way that we do have to strive, we do have to struggle, we do have to reason together to come to truth. But he doesn't hide the truth from us. The truth is in there. Um, but the main warnings from Peter and from the Apostle Paul was, guess what? If you have the truth, people will try to knock it off. People will try to attack it. People will try to subvert it. People will try to change it. You know, I used to always say like, you know, if you have a pair of Nike tennis shoes, somebody's going to knock them off, right? If you have a pair 
of pro wings, nobody's trying to knock those off. And so we have the real deal. And so of course we expect there's gonna be false teachers. There's gonna be false prophets. There's gonna be false things that are gathered around the truth, but it doesn't change the fact that God's revelation to us is truth. Our faith is not blind. It's based on reality. And so I like to use a little illustration and, you know, the light switch. I call it the light switch illustration. If you walk into a room and you flip the switch up, right, you do that without even thinking about it. Why? Because you have faith that when you flip the switch on that light, you know, on that switch on the wall or wherever it's at, when you flip that switch, you understand and you have faith that the light is going to come on. Well, you don't actually know if it's going to tell you do it, but you have a reasonable faith. It's not a blind faith that that light is coming on. Because if you're like me, you know a little bit about the way buildings are built, the way wiring is done, the way switches are installed, and how the electrical wires, you know, uh, connect to your electrical panel in your house or in a building. And then that's connected to the electrical grid in the infrastructure of your city or county or wherever you're at. And then that's connected to some kind of power source, some kind of power plant that produces electricity and sends it through the grid, eventually sending it to that switch, eventually sending it to a light bulb that receives it and boom, it comes on, you have light. It takes faith that when you hit that switch, it's going to happen, but it's not a blind faith. Your faith in Christ is the same way. There's a whole infrastructure that has been developed. We have eyewitnesses. We have the Apostle Paul. We have the Apostle John. We have the Apostle Peter. We have 2,000 years of believers that have followed Christ. We have God's word, his revelation to us. We have this whole construct. We have, you know, strong evidence of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Say whatever you will, but 2,000 years ago, no matter what you believe, 2,000 years ago, the world changed. You can't deny it. Jesus Christ literally changed the way that we tell time. Something happened in the world, whether you believe Jesus is God, whether you believe he's the Savior, whether you believe in God or you can't deny that something changed and that the world has for, been forever changed by Jesus, Jesus Christ in one way or another. You can't deny that. And so we have a reasonable faith that when we flip the switch, when the day comes, when we die or when the Lord comes back, we have a reasonable faith to believe that he is who he said he is. He's going to keep our promises to us and we're going to live with him in eternity forever. So keep the faith, but you don't have to protect the faith. God's taking care of that for you. I'm not